Rowing is one of the most traditional Olympic disciplines and one of the oldest sports in the world. Everybody knows the model athletes who deliver top physical and mental performances on the regatta courses all over the world. Few people know, however, that professional rowers do a large part of their training not on the water, but on indoor rowing machines. This is where they get the basic fitness for a successful competition season. For a rower, a ergometer is very important in the preparation. It uh, reproduces the same gesture and it can uh, also measure how you row. So it's important in the preparation and I can tell you that all the rowers in the world on the water have experience of training on the ergometer. It's a fantastic machine, it's a fantastic tool to improve your physical and, and uh, your, your physical experience and, and, and also your technique. I think that rowers have a love-hate relationship with the erg. It's an incredible workout, it's incredibly efficient. And a lot of rowers might leave their career thinking, oh, I'm never gonna row again. And then they come crawling back because they know they can't find that level of workout anywhere else. But yeah, you're definitely not feeling the love for the erg when you're in the last 250 meters of a 2000 meter test. So I think it's better described as a love-hate relationship. Not only professionals appreciate the highly effective form of training on the ergometer, more and more amateurs and semi-professionals of all ages have discovered indoor rowing for themselves. This trend has not escaped the attention of the World Rowing Federation, the FISA. Three years ago, it held the first FISA World Rowing Indoor Championships. Since then, the number of participants has increased continuously. More than 2,300 athletes from 51 nations will take part in the various categories of this year's World Championships at the venerable Coubertin Stadium in Paris, France. I think indoor rowing is kind of the glue that holds all rowers together. All rowers, whether they're indoor rowers, coastal rowers, para rowers, or flat water rowers, train on the ergometer. And it's also a huge opportunity for us to access groups of people that we wouldn't have otherwise been able to access. So indoor rowing is a huge mass participation opportunity because the indoor rower is so accessible. Here we're seeing people that are training through their 90s in that sense, it, it's kind of opened the doors to who can call themselves a rower, and, and we really love that, that we can kind of open our arms to this new community. You know, in this very competitive world of sport, it's important that rowing, we, we take our part, and to survive in this very competitive uh, environment, it's important to have a, a, a large community. And I believe that the indoor rower can be part of our community and it's a way for us, it's a way for our sport to really enlarge and to get all these people who are doing uh, their exercise on the air part of the rowing community. But how does the World Rowing Indoor Championships work? How do these athletes compete against each other? How do they crown their best over the 2000 meter course? Thierry Louvet, the CEO of Incept, explains this to us. Together with his team, they've brought over 200 of the official machines to the World Championships in Paris. The system is called Ergrace. It's a software that has been uh, invented by Concept2. Basically, it's linking every single machine together. So you've got 96 machines connected, and we are able to do different things. We are able to do one race of 96 people, or like we've had at the uh, World Championship, we've got several categories within this 96 machine. The software is uh, managing that, and then uh, with the uh, addition of the uh, Time Team, which is a Dutch company, they are able to display that in a very fun way on the screen. Athletes of all ages participate in the FISA World Rowing Indoor Championships. The two oldest world champions are 86-year-old Madeleine Guillon and 94-year-old Georges Basset, both from France. They prove that it's still possible to achieve top physical performance even at an advanced age, and that indoor rowing keeps the body fit and healthy. I'm happy, even though I didn't reach the record, because I needed to make the two kilometers in 10.30 minutes, but I didn't. So I'm glad for my club, and they'll see that when we want to, we can.
I'm very pleased. I'm 94 years old and I've always hoped to win a medal during my life. Today I got it. I had to wait 94 years, but I got it. In addition to numerous master categories, the main focus is on the three competition classes filled with international stars, the lightweight men, as well as the open categories for women and men. The biggest star and top favorite for the title among the lightweight men is local hero Pierre Huin. He is a multiple world and European champion as well as Olympic champion, and he has won everything you can win in rowing on water. His goal today is to complete his collection of titles. The Frenchman wants to become the indoor world champion as well. The rowers are ready, and the tension is rising. Ready, set, go. And the race is on. Pierre Huin proves already in the first meters that he really walks the walk. Right from the start, he shows the enthusiastic home crowd his outstanding class and enormous strength. With the fans behind him, the Frenchman manages to keep his strongest opponents Martino Goretti from Italy and Thibaut Collard from France at bay. After a thousand meters, Huin is only a few meters or a little more than one second ahead of Martino Goretti. But now comes the hardest part of the race. With muscles burning, the athletes still have to complete the second half of the distance. A perfect combination of strength, endurance and technique is necessary to be as successful on the ergometer. Above all, mental strength is required to overcome the pain and to continue to row at a high speed stroke by stroke. The three leading athletes fight doggedly for every inch, but Pierre Huin seems to be the fittest. In the end, he wins by 3.5 seconds ahead of his compatriot Thibaut Collard and Italian Martino Goretti. A really tough race and a well-deserved victory for Huin. At the awards ceremony, however, all suffering is forgotten. The gold medal and the national anthem are the deserved reward. He has successfully completed his mission to become indoor world champion. Well, I'm over the moon because this is the last title that was missing in my collection. So I enjoyed to have the chance and race here in Paris. It was an opportunity for me to win that last title that I didn't have. So I'm very, very happy for that. In the women's field, there's definitely no way around Ukrainian Olena Buryak. The 1.93 meter tall model athlete is an absolute specialist on the ergometer. Buryak is the reigning indoor rowing world champion. She has also won the World Urban Games and holds the world record over the 2,000 meter distance. As usual, Buryak makes a brilliant start. Her goal is clear. She is eager to defend her world championship title on her 32nd birthday today, preferably in a new world record time. The Ukrainian quickly gains a comfortable lead. Her dominance on the ergometer is impressive. With her height, her long arms, her powerful legs, Buryak has the perfect physical attributes for indoor rowing. She once said that her strength on the ergometer is a gift from God. The rest of the competition doesn't stand a chance. After half of the race, the two French women, Helena Lefebvre and Elodie Ravera, are already nine seconds behind Olena Buryak, an almost unmanageable gap. But Olena Buryak does not even think about resting. Stroke after stroke, she gets further away from her competitors. After a near-perfect race, she celebrates a start-to-finish victory that has not been threatened at any time. Olena Buryak defends her world championship title on the ergometer. The gold medal is certainly the best birthday present Olena could give herself today. She remains undefeated at indoor championships and continues her impressive series. Today that was difficult, uh, not so easy like yesterday's 500, but um, today I did 2K a little better than a week ago in Ukraine. It's a very little, but I, I'm excited. It's not my best time, what can I show, but 
It's a life, it's okay. Now I need to, to train not on ergometer, I need to row on water. Coming up is the highlight of this year's World Rowing Indoor Championships, the men's race. The experts see Russian Alexander Vyazovkin, Frenchman Mathieu Androdias, and Swiss Barnaby Delarze as the favorites. And the experts were of course right. Vyazovkin apparently has prepared himself perfectly for these championships. With a consistently high stroke rate of up to 39 strokes a minute, he leads the field. Delarze and Androdeas remain close on the Russian's heels. However, at the 1,000 meter mark, Vyasovkin leads by 3.2 seconds over the Swiss and 5.3 seconds over the Frenchman, who is currently sitting in third. Vyasovkin increases the rate of stroke once again, but he still doesn't manage to shake off his opponents decisively. It remains a neck and neck race for the title. The last strokes, and the athletes give it their all, and it is Alexander Vyasovkin, he does it. The Russian holds a tiny lead of 1.7 seconds to the finish line. Vyatsovkin clinches his first major international title ahead of the Swiss Barnaby Delarze and Frenchman Mathieu Androdias. It's without a doubt a great moment for the 23-year-old Russian to be at the top of the podium, and we will certainly see a lot more from him in the next years. It was a very tough race for me, so this first international title means a lot to me, of course. I now know that I'm ready to reach new limits. That's it for the third FISA World Rowing Indoor Championships. This exciting and outstanding competition comes to an end. The professionals are now looking forward to an equally thrilling Olympic season on the water while the amateurs prepare for the next World Indoor Rowing Championships.